talking about the horror comedy movie, The Faceless Man. This one is written and directed by James DiMartino and stars Sophie Turling, uh, Lucas Pittaway, Andy McPhee, Roger Ward, um, Albert Gokeyman. Uh, so yeah, and it's uh, probably butchered half of those names. So this is an Australian and by its own admission, exploitation movie and has its fingers in many, many pies. We'll come on to that again. So let's discuss the plot first of all. Well, it focuses on a small group of kind of teenagers, young adults, as uh, they want to go for a drug fueled uh, you know, vacation away to this kind of particular kind of like holiday home in this kind of small kind of rural Australian town. I think it's six of them. And they are all heavy, heavy drug users. And the drugs is a big theme of this movie. So they go to this kind of like this, uh, this, this kind of town and kind of they've rented this particular house out. Uh, but, but they, they are, they have a variety of different kind of threats among them. There's the threat of this particular ax murderer that we kind of see in the news. We have the locals seem to be very kind of xenophobic, so to speak, and they have a very strict anti, uh, anti-drug kind of policy in their town and they, they don't take kindly to strangers particularly those who would kind of want to uh, party so to speak they're also pursued by um, the Russian mob who uh, want to go after them because they're one of their kind of members have actually accidentally got hold of a uh, some stolen drugs and then of course we have this faceless man who is this kind of like this demonic entity who is like a skinless um, Freddy Krueger-esque sort of style creature that, that may or may not be present within this kind of particular house. Uh, so all these things obviously are all going to sort of come to a head in this movie. What happens? You'll have to watch the movie to find out. So let's discuss, first of all, what works with The Faceless Man. So a relatively low budget movie, I have to say, but it does have a, a, a few things where I feel the scale of it is... Um, you know, it's impressive, certainly for the amount of extras. We have all this, this huge biker gang, for example, uh, all of whom are these kind of like, to do with these kind of this local kind of uh, um, this town and the stuff. There's a fair amount of kind of extras and stuff, so you do have a little bit of a, a kind of a sense of scale of this movie. There's some quite funny moments, I've got to say. Um, I wasn't expecting this to be a kind of a horror comedy, so to speak. Um, but it is, uh, and there are some f sort of funny moments, uh, particularly with this kind of like this uh, this guy who seems to be obsessed with gangbangs and who kind of, kind of he, he's always trying to kind of drop it into the kind of the situation. Uh, but there's, there's just some kind of quite funny kind of one-liners that I that I feel were kind of uh, in this movie. I mean, it's kind of the movie the actual plot itself is is somewhat farcical because there's so many things kind of going on. But the actual horror to a degree is taken sort of seriously, but there's just kind of like these elements of ridiculous kind of like OTT characters that are saying kind of like funny and kind of bizarre things. Like we have um, the mobster who is pretty brutal. He's kind of getting his, he's always getting his ear chewed off by his wife on the phone and things like this. So there are some kind of quite kind of funny moments um, throughout the movie. When we kind of see our, our, our faceless man sort of character, I've got to say some of the prosthetic effects look pretty good. The kind of like the, the open wounds on his kind of face and things like this, and just, it looks pretty gross. Um, I don't know if I like the kind of hands, which might seem like an odd thing to say. They're going to be these long fingernails, but they look a little bit wobbly to me. But yeah, that's your, for the most part, I think the prosthetics on the kind of the, uh, um, the faceless man look pretty good. And I, and I kind of quite like some of our kind of teen characters here. They, they actually have um, quite a kind of a, a good mix of sort of characters that are easily kind of definable. So you kind of don't get mixed up with, um, you know, who's who, for example. I find some of these kind of movies, they, you, they'll cast people that look very similar and have similar personalities and not particularly distinct characters and kind of just blend into one. But here I feel that they've done a good job with the kind of the casting and also kind of making the characters seem kind of like you know, fairly unique, so you kind of always know who's who and stuff like that. 
And this movie is certainly ambitious. Like I've said, there are so many elements at play here. Uh, obviously, there's you know, it has its element, it has its kind of like influences from so many kind of different kind of genres. Like I've said, you've obviously got the kind of like the slasher kind of genre. You've got kind of gangster genre. You've got the kind of like the kind of the backwards hillbilly types here. The kind of the teen kind of comedy sort of things. There are so many things here, kind of in this kind of mixing bowl, that it's hard to kind of like really kind of pigeonhole this in any particular one genre. But that's also, I feel, a negative for this movie. Um, well, so we'll move on to maybe what doesn't work. I feel maybe this has got a little bit too much going on to a certain degree. So you never really feel like anything is particularly developed. Um, certainly The Faceless Man, and since this movie is called The Faceless Man, it actually seems like the lesser out of all of the kind of the threats that we have here, although this one is certainly the most, most otherworldly, um, it really gets the shaft story-wise, because we don't really know anything about it. It just happens to be there, uh, and it doesn't make too many kind of uh, appearances, to be honest with you. And then what we do see, we're not sure if it's actually kind of um, in someone's head, because it really does seem to kind of focus on one particular character, but then it must be real, because we, we do see a few shots of it interacting with other characters as well, but then there's just no, there's just nothing there. There's no explanation or anything like that about what it is, what it wants, nothing like that outside of, oh, this house is cursed, like a throwaway line. So I feel maybe that this movie is trying to juggle too many things. Um, and, you know, like I said, we have so many kind of converging storylines. Some of them are going to get underdeveloped. And I think this is the problem with the actual faceless man itself. And the interesting thing is the shifting tones with this movie. I mean, like I said, there, there are elements of, of, of comedy here that almost make it seem farcical and spoof-like in certain scenes. But, this, but the tone shifts as we go through the movie. The opening, for example, is a very kind of like sort of sobering scene where we have this kind of girl who um, is a cancer survivor and she's really our main protagonist and she's kind of like having this kind of argument with her father. It seems like a very um, drawn out scene for a, a character, i.e. the father, we, that we don't see again in the rest of the movie. Um, it seems a little bit drawn out to me. I get, you know, obviously we're meant to be introduced to our, our female cancer survivor, which I understand, but then the relationship with his fa her father is kind of dropped after that. Um, so it seems a little bit unnecessarily long to me, that particular scene. Uh, the acting as well, I've got to say, is a little bit of a mixed bag. Although I really enjoyed some of the kind of the overtop performances from some of the characters, and some of these characters are meant to be um, somewhat kind of OTT, but then some of them look like they are visibly struggling with some of the kind of the uh, the performances as well. And they just seem some characters, and I won't say who, but there are certain characters who just seem like they are very unconfident behind or in front of the camera, and they're just struggling to show any type of like, real kind of emotion and stuff like that. Um, the movie as well it ends up being pretty violent. There are some kind of like, uh, some fairly kind of gruesome um, acts of violence, but the camera then tends to pull away a little bit in regards to actually seeing anything too explicit. I like, wonder if this was for budgetary reasons and just to show blood splatter going against like, the wall or something rather than seeing what some, something's actually happened. And like I said, I think the, um, the actual makeup of the face span it's a mixed bag because his kind of mask looks fantastic but the hands and that's ironically the thing we see the most i don't know if it works because they, they, these fingernails look like they're made of rubber and seem to be kind of like wobbling around all over the place um again it just seems a little bit of an odd choice to be honest kind of very freddy krueger-esque vibe i got with that so overall, it's a little bit of a mixed bag, this movie. Um, I feel there are some interesting uh, ideas here. Certainly, this is trying to do so much here. There's some interesting characters, some kind of funny moments, some decent kind of uh, elements of with, um, uh, with special effects and stuff. But it ends up being a little bit surreal. Um, and you don't really kind of, it's kind of mishmash of tones, maybe too many story threads, and maybe just a little bit kind of like, um, I mean, the, the, the drug thing is a big thing with this movie, and I think maybe the movie's trying to kind of like give you a visual uh, representation of being on drugs for certain times, but it comes across as a little bit surreal and a little bit self-indulgent at times. But I do feel there are some elements here that are worth watching and kind of, you can, you know, are, are certainly ambitious. So it's kind of like a little bit of a, you know, 
minus in one column and a plus in another. As such, I'll give this movie a five out of 10. So it's certainly um, uh, watchable to a certain degree, but I feel it's no, no one's gonna be loving this film, but no, you don't necessarily hate it either. So a five out of 10, pretty much a, an average review, um, but certainly it's um, it works very well in certain columns and, and doesn't in others, rather than being a kind of like, a, you know, a, a, a mundane film. It certainly isn't that. It's just like, it certainly doesn't work in some areas, but does overwork in others. So therefore, I level out the, 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 kind of the score here. So five out of 10, I hope that makes sense. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to it next time. And by the way, there are two uh, post-credit scenes, so be, be sure to stick around for them. Bye for now.